Well, hello! Welcome to Drawing with Fire. I am Valerie, your neighborhood pyrography artist, here to help guide you on your burning adventures, and I'm joined with hubby. Lord Marshal Prince Rupert of the Crystal Islands. <laughs> oh no! At your service. You changed it! Now i got to try to keep up with it. Oh, oh. <laughs> Shut up, Cap. I well, thought we were it... being fancy because you are doing like this really fancy thing. <laughs> well, if you want to be Lord... I don't remember now. I don't either. Okay. So, I have my pattern transferred. Hi, Sian. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, Hi, Patricia. I did not transfer the pattern onto the side because honestly, I got tired last night. And I, so I have made this little dot that I did transfer. Here we go. And it's right here so I can line it back up. So no issues and we are already. Pudge is here. Hey Pudge. Already having issues with the stream. Yeah. Ugh. Still buffering. Yeah. Is there, are we done buffering? Not yet. Ah, oh, jeez. YouTube. <laughs> Lord and lady. <laughs> oh, gosh. Is it really? Hopefully you guys have caught up to us. All right. So I'm going to start off with my spoon shader. And Pat has been so busy, he now has four sizes of spoon shaders. So I am going to be using the smallest one, hopefully you can see. So we're going to start with the smallest one, since we're doing a small area. I just have the basic um, lines of where some of the hummingbird feathers are, but there are a lot of them. So we... Wee oui, wee. Oui. Wee oui, wee. Oui. We're going to see how this does. Now this uh, Baltic birch board from Treckle, it sanded beautifully. I had no issues with any kind of veneer coming up because it is not a veneer. It's an actual piece of birch. It is glued to the top, but it is a solid piece of birch. So no issues there. Um, what else? I went with the grain because right here, I don't know how well you guys can see it. I chose this part of the grain so that the waterfall has lights and darks in the grain going along with it. And right now I'm just waiting for my tip to get where I want it. All right. So I think I'm going to start here at the tail. Move you guys down come in a little bit I do have my photo it's off to the side here oh and here's the full photo I knew I was forgetting something this is the full photo for this pattern and as you can see it's really busy I took one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven different photos from Pixabay to put this all together and I had to Photoshop it and it looks bigger along here because it also includes the sides. So what you're looking at is the whole pattern. And instead of using Photoshop to outline this time, I used the tracing paper. That way I could decide what lines I want to transfer and hopefully to do it quicker. And I just realized I forgot to grab something. And I don't see. What is it? Well, I was looking for the pattern that I used to make the tracing paper lines, and I don't see it. Oh. Okay, so it don't matter. It was this big old picture that you're seeing here that I did the lines with. So right now we're going to focus on the hummingbird, and this is in color, and that's, I forgot to print out a black and white one. So I might have to use your guys' photo every now and then. So yeah, this this is only an eight by ten, but it was it took hours and I've so I've already technically drawn this three times. 
So now let's do our fourth. So why are you telling them that it was 11 pictures that you put together from Pixabay? I thought you took this the other day when you went through the secret portal to the fairy world that's in our closet. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what it was. Am I not supposed to talk about that? <laughs> that's what it was. I forgot. Oh, right. So I'll Pixabay. Right. <laughs> Pixabay, you can use their photos for free and you don't have to worry about copyright issues. And so I pulled all copyright photos. Yeah, I didn't get the fairy photo. Um, right, Pixabay. Yeah, I didn't get it uh, developed yet. That's what it was. It was a special camera. So with doing this, though, I have to pay attention to my lighting because in all the different photos that I put together, the lighting is all different. So I have to pick one direction that the lighting is going to be coming from and make sure that I get it all incorporated so they look like it, they all belong together. And so I'm going to look at the light coming down basically this way, which means all my shadows will be on this side instead. And for the hummingbird, the lighting is over here in the photo. And so is the mushroom, but I'm thinking, I don't know, because parts of this are going to be really dark burns, because I really wanted to test this wood, so we're going to have really dark burns in the back, and the, pon the ferns are going to be blended out and kind of blurry, and there's just a lot there, and I also try to set this up based on the rule of thirds so that's why the the hummingbird is where it's at this is my focal point this is where the the really sharp detail is going to be and as we get further out though they'll still be detailed they just won't be as detailed so i can get that contrast as well so now that i've yapped long enough it's time to touch down on the wood it's still even now it's nerve-wracking to me to put the touch down on the wood so i'm going to start with the tail and i can actually go darker and looking at this i could probably go with a bigger spoon shader as well and i'm trying to go though the photo doesn't have that much detail in the tail because it is under it is going to be underneath and further back and this is darker i still want to go in the direction of how the feather is put together and how everything works together so that we get that realistic feeling of it being a feather it's not barbs what are the little hairs and all put together. <laughs> mm -hmm. What are they called? The little, um, yeah, I'm just going to go in the direction that it should be in. Like what's a feather on? Well, or? no, not the feather itself, but you know how the feather has it, it, almost like hairs that create, it's like, you know, so many of them, it creates the feather, mm -hmm. but it's not a hair. What would it be called? Oh, I don't know. I don't either feather material. <laughs> it's not hair. Or is it? Alright, so I bumped up to three. And though I could go darker, I'm just going to block this in so we can get going. Um, you got a couple questions. Yes. Okay, so Patricia wants to know if you're going to watercolor this at all. I... This is ridiculous. back okay i am so sorry about the buffering i don't know what's going on with that in my original photo that i put together i had bubbles and in those bubbles i wanted to have lightning bugs because i love lightning bugs but i ended up taking those out because i felt that this piece already had so many elements to it that it was too much but i do think i still want to put like smaller 
fireflies throughout. Patricia didn't actually hear your answer because of the buffering. <sighs> no. I'm, I'm going to... No watercolors for this one this time. Three and, and a half. Christiane Gerstner wants Chris. to... Chris wants to know if that's a quarter inch spoon. This one... Oh, I put the plastic thingies away. It is an eighth. This one's the eighth inch spoon. Thing is, is he had both of them marked as an eighth inch spoon, but they're two two big two different sizes. So I got both of them the same day, and they're marked the same. Let's see here. Yeah, he has them both marked an eighth of an inch. So I will have to check on that for you. I haven't been so busy. I haven't been able to talk to him. But this is the first time I'm getting to test these spoons out. I I don't know where the mischief makers are, Patricia. <laughs> That's a good question, because without the mischief makers, this would be like just... Well, I think Chris could do a good job being a mischief maker if you need one. Oh. Well, there you go. You asked where they are. Look in the mirror. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move over. So I do see highlights in the feather, but in the tail, but I'm not going to put them in like I normally would. If you saw this out in nature, the hummingbird would be smaller, so you'd be putting less detail in because you wouldn't see as much detail because I have focused on her, there is going to be a little bit more detail going in. So in nature, so you mean like in the secret world? It's... Yeah, if you saw in the secret world what I saw, it would look, yeah. have a little less. I just wanted to be clear on that. <laughs> I didn't want to, to um, didn't, I didn't want to. Um, I'll think of the word. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is closer to the barb. It's I didn't darker. Want to offend Her Majesty the Hummingbird oh. Queen. No, you, you. And what makes this a surreal piece is I'm putting her into a non-natural situation with her being queen. And more of a fantasy, fairy-ish type background. And they're, the plans for this one is there's going to be other pieces. And they will fit together. Um, so we're getting one scene here. And the next scene I haven't decided on. But I'm thinking a bigger animal. An animal that wouldn't in real life bow down to a hummingbird. Because I don't think there's any animal that bows down to a hummingbird um, and that's what makes it surreal is changing the situation so far the wood seems to be doing fine it's sanded really nicely I feel like the, the otter that, that you got the otter was going to go that route but I didn't yeah he seems like maybe the court scholar you think Look, he could live down here <laughs> in the rocks. Oh, in the water? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So are you saying do another otter? Um, maybe. I do have photos of otters in the water. Uh, Autumn Rose wants to know if you're going to sell this piece when you're done. Hey, Autumn. Yep. All my pieces are for sale. And um, Patricia thinks the great blue heron would be cool because has no predators and Cheryl Bennett says a stag or a dragon wouldn't bow down I don't think I was thinking I when I was kind of fleshing out the story in my head which isn't really fleshed out but when I was thinking about this I think I was thinking of a wolf 
bowing down to her. Um, because I worked for uh, a week on the pattern, trying to put things where I wanted it and coming up with the different elements that I wanted. But before that, I spent another week or two brainstorming on this one. So you have a new person in chat, Katrina Belgom. Hi, Katrina. She's um, from Lisa's. Ah, who's new to wood burning and uh, would like uh, some kind of explanation. I am burning the wood with a hot pin. Really hot. Really hot. Though right now I'm only on three and a half. Um, but when we say really hot, would you say it's like, let's talk degrees? Ooh, I'm not sure. It's like the burners in general say that they can, you know, get up to 1200, 1400 degrees. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that's how accurate that is. Um, and I haven't tested it with our, though, from what I understand, it's not very accurate with our little heat radar gun thingy. We could all get the, um, the cooking one. That's what I'm talking about. No. The actual one that you stick in stuff. Oh. I don't know if it goes that high. And so I'm burning the wood, which damages it. It makes very beautiful tones. Oh, um... That's interesting. What's so wrong? My, our buffering may have been YouTube because Lana Goes Art says that there was some kind of YouTube update during the stream. Ugh. YouTube didn't tell me. Of course not. That would imply they talked to us. So right now I'm kind of going with the grain and I'm moving the pin quicker for the, that lighter burn. I have not readjusted the heat. But I'm just blocking this in. Well, Patricia, you asked for a mischief, a mischief maker. Hello, Grace. Hey, Grace. <laughs> you ask and she appears. Grace appears. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's tighten this up a little bit. I need to check to see how the um, ball tips burn on this. If we're going to get a lot of blobs, because I'm kind of getting them. Actually, no, I'm going to go with my favorite tip. I'm going to switch over to the spear shader. I can get a smooth burn in small areas with it. Yeah, it feels fine. I'm not feeling any warping. And the sides of these are basswood, not pine, which is why I'm really excited to do a wraparound piece because I know it's going to burn a lot more evenly Oops. than pine does. Mm. So at least I'll be able to get a closer burn without having to worry about grain. I do kind of feel grain with this tip. Hmm. I'm really hopeful about the wood, but I also need it to <clears throat> burn smooth. If I want texture, I'll put it in. So I need this to burn smooth and keep the detail sharp. Because like with paper, depending on if you've got the wrong paper, and you're using not the best ink for that paper, the ink can feather. That happens in burning too. Your burning can feather. So I'm trying. It's not all confusing you talking about burning. Your burning can be feather when you're working on feathers. Uh, <laughs> didn't think of that one. All right, I bumped up to about three and a quarter. Let's see if, and I am putting a little pressure down so that I can kind of push the grain back down, make it a little more even. Mm -hmm. 
part of me is wondering if I should do a area where there's a really dark burn so I can see how it does there. It, all the boards that I, because I sanded three of the trackle boards, uh, the panel, the cradle board, and the round, and all of them sanded really nicely. And they come pretty smooth, but you do need to sand them. Let's darken this up. Well, Autumn Rose likes the idea of the wolf down down to the hummingbird. So. And I was also thinking of like a crooked who's an accountant. So the wolf would be her guard, hmm. not attacking her. Not sure where the story is going to go. I don't know. Just go in the closet and look in the secret world. This is not Narnia. Just, just paint from reality. <laughs> it's not Narnia. Let's see. Narnia is not real. I don't even know why you'd go there. That's where that story came from. Um. So, when you sand your pieces, how much time do you spend sanding on each one? On each one? Mm -hmm. Well, I did the three, and I think I spent almost an hour. Oh. I I do I do both sides, and or the edges, depending on what type of board. But like for the panels, I do both sides, and. I have to go through the 220, the 320, and then the 400. So maybe it, maybe it was about 45 minutes. Maybe I should have paid attention to the clock. About by the time I'm done, it's easily 10 to 15 minutes per side. Eat here. Yay, Eve must have got her internet working. Yes, she got faster internet. You can tell because her message like appeared really fast. <laughs> well, then it's better than Why our internet. Why are you laughing? Her internet appeared, or her comment appeared really quick. All right. Now, I noticed you brought your sketchbook in. Uh -huh. Is there a reason? Uh, I could probably might sketch, but I thought I might. Oh, I thought you were bringing it in to show. Well, I wanted to show that the evolution of the of my legendary dragon elk, elk warrior thing. from last week. Thing. All right. Thing. One thing I okay, maybe I did get it. Okay, I had noticed on the photo this morning that there's a little bit of a feather that sticks out here. And I thought I missed it, and I. What it looks like is this feather goes straight down, mm. and so that bulk is the uh, little piece coming out. See, right now it's hard for me to decide how dark to go with this because <laughs> the body and the wings. See, the tail is the darkest part, and we have wing over here the wing here and we've decided the lights coming down this way so this needs to go darker now for my pattern i use photoshop but and we have a monthly subscription I think we're paying $10 a month for a photo shop in Lightroom. Mm. All right, I bumped up to four. Let's see what we can get. I'm trying to use just the tip. For this right now, I don't want a gradient. I'm trying to build up my darks 
But since the tail is under the mushroom, or going behind the mushroom and underneath the cap, we're going to have more shadow here. And while I'm working on this, I'm trying to figure out how and what pen I'm going to work on the little feathers for with. And I had thought about, and I didn't do it, I thought about putting a little hummingbird nest because the nests are tiny, tiny, tiny. And putting an, just one egg in there. But then I forgot about it. So just now. Mm -hmm. Todd wants to see the hour. But you guys will have to wait till the toward, towards the end of the stream. <laughs> if that's okay. So... Yeah, because I'm going to have to like, back off the camera so you can see the whole... So like the traditional hairstyle of the warrior dragon elk, the mullet, <laughs> business first, then party in the back. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty good. Alright. Still not as dark as I want, but I'm going to come back to this because things will need to be adjusted. So, oops, we will move up. I think this is easier for me to just move the camera instead of zooming in. And I'm going to bump down to three and a half. Let's see here, look at their photo. So this part is going to be lighter mm -hmm. with this part being darker. So I'm going to have to look at things in the opposite. So this, that dark in here, and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna stick with this spear shader because the tip is so small, I can get into places. So this is darker, and right now I'm just blocking in so that I can go back and erase and get the pencil lines out. And I transferred this with the Walnut Hollow transfer paper, graphite paper, graphite. So we're going to have a little light that because the light's going this way, we are going to have some light hitting along the edge. But let's see here, because the head comes over, we're going to have darker here, darker along the wing because the wing sits on top of the feather so that's going to be an overlap um, this is the neck coming into the body so this part's going to be lighter but this will be darker and it's always easier to go lighter and then darken it up that way um, you see the values of everything else so this won't be the full darkness of what I would do just blocking in those shapes. Right now I'm using the very end and trying to be careful because even though this is sanded smooth, this tip can still get caught on the grain. So I'm trying to be careful. And bump down. So, and I had thought about putting other color on this. And I had thought about watercolor because I have the duo, I have a du duo color and interference, and they're both blues and, and greens. But I don't know how well that would show up, even on a dark burn, but also look cloudy. And I don't want cloudy um, over the burning. Alright, so let's get this wing in here. And then I'll erase the lines. Is this close enough or do I need to zoom in? No, it's close enough. I'm watching you on the tablet. So. Let's see here. I'm going to put in some of these. I can see what you're doing. You can see me? I'm just tapping because I know that the eraser is going to overlap and take off some of the 
graphite outside of it so I'm just trying to get it in there all right let's see how it seems to be erasing well except that just got dirty I'm so tired I am too I will not yawn you just did I'm sorry <laughs> you just did I'm gonna have to go get, I'm, I've been drinking green tea because I've already had two cups of coffee and I didn't want to go into more coffee. Why did that smear? I'm going to try and get another green tea. So I'm going to take, take my medicine here. Hmm. Seeing an issue. Why, is that, why that looks dirty like that? I'm not sure. Luckily, this part's darker because the graphite smeared into the wood. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, there's always going to be issues. <laughs> what? Great. <laughs> there's always going to be issues. Great. It's wood. It's yes. got... What? I don't know. I'm just being contrary. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> it's okay. I totally did, though. I'm, I'm gonna go get some more tea. You're gonna leave me alone? No. With Grace? Oh, well, Bernadette's here. She oh. never listens to me. Well, I feel like that she just has your best interests in mind. Let's see here. For whatever reason, the pencil's smeared, and it could be I didn't check to make sure. My eraser was dirty before. I could have smeared it myself and it's not the wood. We'll pay attention to other parts and see how it does. But now I've got to... Uh, i got to fix this. So now I'm going to try to blend. You got it, Bernadette? <laughs> I got it! <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Thirsty. All right, so let's try to hide that graphite because I can still see it. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can. So I'm going to try to blend it in. Luckily, this is on the shadow side, so it's okay if this is a little darker. As it should be. Alright. I will come back to that area because I also need to ooh, carefully put the water in the background. So it's gonna be a matter of blending. He left me. I always feel so overwhelmed when he's gone. I gotta remember, look up to chat. Look back down to burn. At this point, I'm kind of only talking to myself, aren't I? I don't want this to look outlined. I do think we are gonna try a ball tip, and it's gonna have to be the small one. Oops, sorry. Let's see how this does. Alright. Yeah, I'll be able to hide it. It's just a pain. I think what I should have done is I should have wiped down the board after I sanded. I should have wiped down the board with uh, the denatured alcohol, which would raise the grain a little bit. And then sand again with 400, and that should have made it even smoother. I will try that with the next board that I sand to see how it does with that. Um, well, the spoon shader seems to, or the ball tip seems to be doing well. And 
I am at three. Do need to erase more pencil to get those. I don't want to outline, though luckily with the wing overlapping the body, we get a cast shadow. And that helps the uh, feathers to stand out better. Oh, took out some of my fur. Hmm. See, I haven't decided if I was going to put a rock back here or more fern. But part of me feels like I need to burn a little bit back here so I can see the value of the wing. This is going to be darker. Right, let's get those in here and we can go. I need to remember to look at my reference photo. Because what tends to happen is I get to burning with you guys and then I don't pay as much attention. And after the live, when I go to work on this some more, I have to fix things. So I'm just putting these in. I'm just squiggling because we're not going to see full on detail. You should be like me and never make any mistakes. <laughs> I wish. What? We're in nothing. I wish I could do that. But then I wouldn't learn anything. Mm -hmm. I've never burned a hummingbird before. So this is all new. I think we got enough in there that I can erase and build up. Yep, yeah, that's better. It's not that Bernadette has gravity defined hair. She just uses a lot of product. <laughs> is that what it is? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to put in these darker details. And then I'm going to try to follow my reference photo. Because I know I can see the individual feather hairs I'll just call them that okay feather hairs but my photo is that I'm looking at is bigger than what I'm burning so I have to keep that in mind and I can always go back with the skew and put those in are they plumes it's not plumage is it mm, no I don't think so I'm not exactly sure. Let's see here. Now I know I'm not going to be able to get her done today. Need to focus on. Since we don't know what the word actually is for those little fuzzies on the feathers, we should just have one of our French people throw us out a word that we can refer to it as. <laughs> I'll it'll, ask, just be, it'll just be that from now on. Ask Eve for a word. There you go, Eve. Give us a word. For the fuzzy part of the feather. And what I mean by fuzzy part of the feather is each individual strand that makes up the feather. Unless somebody actually knows the name of them. And then we'll just use the proper term. But you do realize that your phone can go on Google, right? It's no fun. <laughs> All right. Our chat is full of intelligent and creative people. Why would I use Google? This is true. Because we have the best chat ever. Woo. I'm closer to the mic, so I didn't want to get louder. <laughs> I was going to say, that was a little weak. <laughs> well, because the mic's right here. Right. So I'm trying to be careful and not break anybody's eardrums. So, woohoo! Uh, well, Christiane and, and Podge are saying those are barbs. So they're all, so each individual, which, 
We, I don't have a feather in here, do I? Because I'm sure you do. No, I don't think I brought it in. Shucks mm -hmm. darn. No, it's on the counter. Oh, okay. So each individual, I don't know if we'll be able to see it. I will fix it, but we'll try. So what I'm talking about is if you look at the the reference photo, find a pointer. There we go. I'm talking about each little hair that makes up the whole of the feather. So is that what we're calling the barb? Is that what, I mean, not that we're calling it, is that? So each one of these little hairs that makes up the full feather. Can I get in closer, closer, closer? I think we get it. In there. <laughs> oh, see, this reference photo has the bubbles. So Christiane goes, yep, barbs, that's barbs. smaller, barbules, All right. even smaller, hooklets. Hooklets. So is it a hooklet on a hummingbird because it's smaller? And then and then if it's from a 70s space movie <laughs> with Jane Fonda, then it's a Barbarella. <laughs> that may not be related. Mm, I don't think it is. Oh, okay. Alright, now I'm going to have to go back in and layer the feathers on top of each other so that they're sitting right. But for now, I'm just going to squiggle them in. Technical term. Very technical term. Squiggling. Hmm. And squiggling. I'm stirring my tea with my pencil. Uh, why would you do that? Because I, I want it to be a darker T. That's why I'm using an 8B. <laughs> did you really do that? Not with the pencil side. Oh. But you did do it with your dirty hand after you've been drawing. Because, you know, the photo I posted on Facebook. Okay, okay, but my hand doesn't... Okay, it was a little like that. But it doesn't look like that right now. Okay, let's see here. I've got this little... Not straight enough. Paulo is here. Paulo hey, overall. Paulo. All right. Now we will come back to that. And I do keep going back and forth because I'm trying to get a balance as I go along. Thing is, is that can be darker. Let's try it darker. Oh, Christian says that she thinks that we should really call them Barbarellas now. Barbarellas? Or maybe that is the name of the hummingbird. Barbarella? Considering I haven't named her. You know, that was a trippy movie anyway. I didn't see it. It fits right in. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> I honestly didn't see it. Let's see here. So. I only saw it recently. How could you see it recently and it I not see it? Who did you work with? I watched it while I was drinking coffee in pieces, like not all at once. And the reason why I watched it is it came out when I was like nine. And uh, I'm pretty sure I was forbidden to watch it. <laughs> and now I know why. So. Oh, is it bad? Not really. Just, you know, 70s. Well, if you were nine, that would make me five. So you must be old. You keep bringing that up. You cut me. Cut me deep. <laughs> what, I didn't burn you? <laughs> Not today. Yeah. Not yet. Let's see. Not that. You, you, get, you got yourself, not me. Not today. And you can't even tell where I got myself last week. That's good. Because it was quick enough that... It makes the skin white, but, and of course you feel it, but it wasn't enough to do any damage. Let's see here. Get these darker. Remember, we always go through an ugly stage until it's not ugly anymore. But with this, I am having to use a smaller tip to get into the areas.
Let's darken this up and see how it looks. Now this wing is straighter. It actually comes in more to the body. Let's bring it in. Let's see here. The signing here earlier? Mm-hmm. Nice say hi. Okay. <laughs> she was. I'm just making sure. I have yeah, she's the one that wants the Optima, but um, I can't be shipped out there. Let's see. For some reason, I have this pretty angled more so than it should be. It should be more round. Hmm. See, Ian's puppy is watching uh, hmm. this too. It's very intense. Just watching. Just watching. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, I can always pull it in with the outside burn, but let's see here. You see less because the neck is, well, it's not flat. <laughs> and so we will put less scribbles in there. In fact, that'll be more of a of the spear shader. So, so let's try that and see if I can get that round. Let's see if I can get more of this graphite off. Ready? Oh, this I said spear shooter. Let's get. I'm gonna go just below three because I don't want it as dark. But we have to make sure, and that's one of the reasons why I'm not outlining, um, is because things in real life aren't flat; they're rounded in some way. Even if it's a box, it's still rounding around sharply, but it's still doing it. So I need to make sure and follow the, follow the natural curves so the barb here feels more 3D. I mean, you could always do this in like a pop art style. Mm -hmm. but that's not what I see for this piece. You need to say Barb, and it makes me think of that show. What show? Try the part. <laughs> we haven't watched it in a while. Oh, no. So, busy. I'm trying to define the separation without being every single barb or hook, what was it hook feather hooklet 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 all right so we're going to lightly put this in going with the direction of The feathers. So if they're barbs, a porcupine has barbs. Does that mean that a porcupine is a bird? Can you imagine how terrifying a flying porcupine would be? Uh, unless it's, what's its name? What's it? Teddy. Teddy the, oh, he's so awesome. Oh my God, that's a video idea. Like a flying, <laughs> For you? a flying attacking porcupine. But why does a porcupine have to attack? He can attack as a team. Somebody can throw him like a football. Oh, okay. So he's a weapon. Yes. Does he make the teddy noises? He'd be very intense. He'd be like, he's too far away to fight by hand. Throw me. <laughs> Let's see here. See if I can move this over. There we go. Move this up. All right. Move that guy. 
help see a little bit. Not that I can really see on my photo. Alright, so I'm just quickly. I'm not fully defining them because you're not going to see them every little stroke. But I do need to make sure and get the shape of it right. Let's see here, so that based on where it put that. So this is gonna be darker. Correct, it's quills, Grace. Quill. Do the quills have barbs? <laughs> Does that mean that the quilts are miniature or miniature hummingbirds? Now that would be a cool superpower. That when the bar the quills are released, they're hummingbirds. Yeah, like, like with sharp seeking, beaks. Seeking quills. Seeking mm. quills. Philip. Hey Philip. Trying to get this blended. I'm using just the side. I thought you were going to touch it there. No, but I got a point where I'm using it. No, I know this is hot. I know it's on. So it's easier to remember not to burn yourself. Let's see here. That goes down. I got to remember to have light areas and I can always go back over and shade the whole thing to make sure that the what's supposed to be in shadow is these go more straight down and I'm just squiggling just squiggling Zoe Hitchhikes is here Hey Zoe. Oh, I'm sorry. Hitchhik is. <laughs> Should have warned Chris. Should have told her you like to rename people. I don't. Is it not? I'm just good at pronunciation. It says hitchhikes. That's the other way to pronounce it, though. <laughs> Hitchhik <laughs> It's more exotic. Well, I do believe she's in Europe. All right. So I'm just trying to get the. The direction, because some of these are going down, and some of them are going towards the wing. So I need to be careful with that. Let's see here on your guys' photo. What is Eve asking about? Oh no, I didn't check, buddy. Thunderstruck yet? It it is an animated series on Netflix. Oh. Or at least on Canadian Netflix, I need to check to see if it's here. And I keep telling her I'm gonna look it up, but then between this and getting my pattern done for the Animal Artist Collective, which that is gonna be something completely different than I've never done before. Not the subject, but how I'm doing it. I have a completely different vision for that one. Um, so between working on those two, I haven't gotten a whole lot of other things done. Wow, oh, Chad perked up. Um, yes, I am tired, but I'm on my second uh, cup of green tea. So I'm, I'm, So he'll wake up about the time the stream's I'm over. The tiredness away. Maybe I should start drinking green tea before the stream starts. Maybe you should. Maybe. Let's see here. So I'm not trying to put everything in, but I am trying to get the shapes right. Let's see here. Like this one overlaps. Oh, okay. I guess we're going to have to watch this show now. Yeah, it's by Robot Chicken Guys. Oh, well, then it's automatically good. <laughs> I just keep forgetting about it. I keep telling her I'm going to watch it, but then I haven't really watched anything. Let's see here. Checking my values there. Let's see. Can I zoom you guys in without it distorting? In fact, I think I need to pull the zoom out. 
It's a little clearer when I do it that way. So zoom, wee. Okay, maybe it's not so clear. Hmm. Oh, that's right. I don't have autofocus on. Oh, there we go. Much better. All right. Though I will say that the color is a little off to the actual burning. So I'm gonna drop that down a little bit. I try to get it as close so that you guys can see what the actual color is. And it always seems to show it a little too orangey red. So I'm trying to... Let's see here. Okay. That should work. Remember, the tip is hot, but I touched down in an area that I knew was going to be dark. So I used the tip being hot to darken an area and then move out. Oops. Now you guys can really see me mess up. I'm using the edge. Let me pull it back a little bit. It seems quiet today. How's everybody doing? Uh, they're talking about that show. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna sneeze. Sorry. <coughs> oh goodness. Are you I okay? Away from the camera. Yo. Oh. Yeah, I'm alright. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my goodness. You okay? Yeah. At least you gave a warning. So because of how dark I went with these areas in here, I am going to have to darken up, but we'll move on. Thank you, Christian. So we'll go up here. And I am trying to use just the edge to get a little bit of the definition in without overdoing it like I did there. So we know this is darker. This area is lighter. I'm just tapping. Try not to make it look outlined, but I need some of it in there so that I can erase the pencil lines. You know, actually, I think I kind of feel like I need the eyeball in there. Oh, Patricia has to go. Bye, Patricia. Have fun storming the castle. I get some work done. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was just thinking about Cyrus. I gotta go. I got work to do. <laughs> well, I'm like further ahead than on there, huh? Huh? Oh. You okay? Yeah. Let's see here. We're gonna do the eyeball. I didn't realize how far back or how much of a time difference yes all right so i'm going in dark so because we know the light's coming in this way that's going to change the direction of our highlight a little bit so this is just a small ball tip and i'm on almost four so Get that in there a little later. Tap it down. And then I'm going to have to take the smaller, the MS, 9MS tip to put in the uh, smaller lines. Make that able a little bigger. Get that in there. So this on our photo is darker, 
is actually going to have to be lighter because that's where our light is hitting. This will be darker because it's underneath. So let's get that in there. And then we got, I'm going to use a different tip for the beak. But, yeah, I really want to get into the smaller details since that's what I'm supposed to be focusing on. So this is the 9MS. And what we're looking at is the um, different areas of the eye. Let's see here. <coughs> And the thing is, the camera is right in front of where I'm trying to burn. Oh, it is right there. It Why is. It so close? So that it would hopefully be a clearer video. Oh, I feel like you're... You think you're going to be able to burn? Mm-hmm. I'm having to sit up in my chair. I have to put autofocus on so that... Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Maybe not. Nikki Williams uh, is in chat now. Hey, Nikki. And uh, I'm going to tap because I don't want an outline. So I'm going to tap. Okay. Tap, 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 tap. And Christian, um, Valerie is working on an easel at about a, what degree angle are you working at? About 80, 85 mm -hmm. degrees. Okay. Let's see. Get that in there. Tap, tap, tap. Because we don't want it to be a harsh line. So if I tap it, I can get a broken, less harsh line. That makes sense. Huh? That makes sense. Yeah. And in doing that, it looks more realistic than if I tried to outline it. Stippling is your friend, especially for little details. Okay. So that actually goes all the way around. I'll have to bring it in more. But I don't want it harsh. Fill this out a little better. Because it's a smaller eye, it was harder to transfer correctly. So. We do have darker here, even if the light is coming down, because we have angles. Everything's at an angle, and the angles change. So right now, it's almost like a cheek. So I'm just tap, tap, tap. This also gives us a look of the smaller feathers. It gives us a lot more texture. Yep, Lana, it's a hummingbird. Ow. Okay. Yeah. So tap, tap, tap. But I think the tapping with the broken lines helps to give us a little bit more realism. So this area is not going to be as dark because that's where the light is hitting. And so I know the highlight is going to be on the top, whereas it's a little different in the photo. This will be darker. Let's see here. And we got a line where her mouth Trying to get this straight. Let me see here. So it does bulb down at the bottom. Bulbs. Yeah, my line's a little off for the beak, so I'm going to have to bring it up and curve it. You know what? Since I burned it, what I can do. So they can see how I fix a drawing, maybe, without erasing everything else. 
So one good thing about these erasers, the Vanish 4-in-1 eraser, I can cut it. Hopefully it's not going to shoot me somewhere. And I'm cutting it because I need, I need a straight edge so I can get in here without taking away the rest of my pencil. Next week we're gonna have to get more erasers. Yeah. All right. So, what did I do with my pencil? I left it over there. I moved. All right. So this is the Pentel. Oh, just hit no. Is that on the TV? Oh, you have to do the, the menu thingy again. I did it last week. I don't know why. Oh, it went away. So, let's fix this line. It goes up closer to the mouth. And then it comes back down. Hmm. It looks like it's a thinner beak because of the highlight along the edge. And so that is kind of throwing me off because that highlight's going to be different in this piece. So let's try this again. This goes here, that comes up, it goes back down. This highlight is not here. So I'm going to have to fix this. See, and it's better to fix your drawing than it is to try to fix a burning. And this graphite um, is the HB lead and it works better on erasing as well. So let's bring this down. Trying to get it straight. And I'm off right there. So it comes down to a razor point, like a needle point at the end. And now that I see that, I need to curve this down. So the burning needs to go down. I'll bring this to a point, and this also needs to come to a point. What's wrong? What are you What are you doing over there? I don't know, it's messing around with something. What are you playing? With? Oh, why are you playing with the mat cutter? Hmm. Why? It's cool. Why? It cuts. Did you cut yourself? No. You cut yourself. I did not cut myself. Did you poke yourself? Maybe. <laughs> hmm. Alright, so I'm gonna figure out I'm gonna have to put the rest of the beak in in order to um, get it where I want it. So we're gonna switch back over to the ball tip. So Sienna, actually a tabletop easel is what Valerie is using. Yep. I'm on a tabletop easel. All right, so we know that the highlight's actually going to go along this side of the beak. So. Well, there's no injuries on stream. <laughs> None that you're going to admit to. No, I don't. I'm not leading. But you poke yourself. Double checks to see if that's. <laughs> You poked yourself, though. Grace, I will. I am totally careful. Um, Famous last word. Any time that I run with scissors, I always make sure that the points are away from me. <laughs> away from you. <laughs> because well, you're not allowed to run in the house. Says I'm not allowed to run in the house. I can run in the house. 
Whenever you tell me, I can. <laughs> it's also why I hide the scissors. I knew it! I was trying to find the scissors last week. I couldn't find them. Let's see here. I'm trying to get this smooth. So. Yeah, your, your finger's fine from last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's all better. In fact, I completely forgot about it by the time the live was over. Mm. Right, so, we got that in. So now our shadow is going to change. Why does everybody think I sound sleepy? I'm, I haven't yawned. Is it the way I'm talking? Yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> you asked me a question. Was I not supposed to answer it? No, there's just no hesitation in it. I was just surprised. That because you're... I have a sleepy sound? You do have a sleepy sound. I was not aware of that. Well, that's why they're telling you. Why? What is my sleepy Let's sound? Let's see here. So, actually, I went a little too dark up here. I'm going to change my voice so that I can't be told I have a sleepy sound. So how come it looks like the hummingbird is going off camera for them? Ah! It went off. <laughs> there shouldn't be a timer on, but I guess it is. Huh. Maybe it's just because of how. So I'm going to have to take a knife and thin out the mouth. Okay. So this... That because like, there sounds like a gangster threat. I'm gonna take a knife and thin out your mouth. <laughs> well, I gotta, cause I see a hummingbird's beak is two is two toned, meaning it it's gray, at least for this hummingbird, mm. but it also has pink. That pink's going to be a lighter value, and I went too dark, so I'm going to have to clean that up. I guess I might as well clean that up while I'm stream. Let me find my knife. Why is my knife not here? Is Do you hiding him from me? Over there is there a hey, hey. Supposed to hit me. <laughs> over there is there a knife? Right, give me a second I'll look at it and I'll look for it. <laughs> Should be I'm looking. when I was cutting mats for the show. No, it's not, not in the, the holder. No, not in the holder. There's a pair of scissors over here. No, I don't need scissors. Ha! I found the scissors. I don't need the scissors. Move on. I need the knife. I don't know where it went. I have two knives, and they have somehow got up and walked away. Hold on, guys. Here it is. Well, I'm not pointing it at you, nor was I running. So there, me. Yeah. All right. So I need to lighten. No, Grace. I don't have all the sharp objects. No, those stay in my studio. I can't get the angle to use the blade flat. I may have to come back to this. Because I'm still trying to figure out what. Um, I hate doing this. Actually, this tip on this knife is broken off. And I tend to use it. Oh, this wood really lightens up. But I also have to remember now, because I'm scratching, that it's going to... It requires a lower heat, because it's going to burn darker. Mm. Let's see here. I'm not going to have the highlight that is long.
Let's make sure I'm on the right side. No buffering. Of course we are, because why wouldn't we? We need to figure out what's going on with that. I check the settings. And buffering is not something I can test for. Right. Let's see here. Lower, lower, lower. So I'm thinking the highlight's going to hit more on top. So we'll go darker on this side, but I'm going to leave a thin line for now. Looks like you're using a marshmallow. A marshmallow. That's what it looks like. Why does it look like a marshmallow? Well, look at it. And it's on screen. And what? The... Oh, I'm behind you. Well, so, oh, you're, you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about the. <laughs> I was like, "What?" I'm behind you in time. I you know the buffering just keeps making it worse. It's making it worse. It is. And I didn't even hook up two cameras today. Yeah, we're aware of the buffering. We didn't say it's... anything while the buffering was going on. Yeah, I'm trying not to talk when I know it's buffering. That way. Things aren't getting missed. Alright, so we got that line down. I'm trying to figure out how dark. <coughs> Excuse me. How dark. Let's see here. On your guys' photo. I'm wondering if I can go a little bigger with him so I can see. Maybe. there so because I'm shifting my light source it's going to be the opposite so you have a question mm-hmm um, do you get that gummy texture when you're burning I can't explain it but some areas of wood seem to gum up and it's not a dark burn no what what would that because that would be pine um, and other other sappy woods now they're um the basswood and the birch that i use they're kiln drying and i believe they're low sap trees anyway so but i know exactly what you're talking about and that happens i know for a fact with pine there's other woods that can do it but i may not have used them so what you burning on, Chris, that you're getting that? Because that's going to cause you to have to clean your tips a lot, a lot, a lot. I'm trying to fix this. This bulb's out. She's not sure of the wood. It's a box that she's burning on. More than likely, it's pine. Does it have... Um, I don't think I have anything here to show. Well, I do. This. But I can't <laughs> lift that up. Pine tends to have... Um, pine tends to have grain that it goes in lines like this. And the harder green is darker, and in between here is lighter. And it doesn't necessarily have to be straight, but so within the darker green is the lighter green. This is hard green, that's soft green. You're not going to get an even burn, and um, you'll have sappy hues. Mm. 
I don't, I'm not happy with, with this. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to have to do a bit of negative burning to kind of fix it. But I can't do that until I'm ready to put the background in. Mm. It's going to have to wait. So for now, put that in and then underneath here. She says it's smooth, the wood. It's smooth, but it looks like that for sure. And it's only happening in certain spots. If you can uh, post a Facebook photo, as soon as I see it, I can tell you if it's pine or not. Now, if it's any other wood, I won't be able to necessarily tell you what it is. The craft stores are bad about not, um, and, and the wood that is sold at craft stores are not very good at letting you know what kind of wood it is. Just says craft wood most of the time. And that can be frustrating. Alright, so let's get his throat her throat in. Remember these are still just my first layers. I'll be doing more to darken up and tweak. Let's see here, this was darker. Now I think next week we'll probably work on the water. The waterfalls. I think that could be interesting. I haven't done it before. Christian says it's the box that she posted in the group. Okay, I'll look at that. And she's going to post another picture. Uh, look at it after the live. How much longer are we going? Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. I guess I'm trying to get as much detail in because and you don't have to put as much detail in as I am. This is my brain and how I work. Um, of course, you don't have to. Let me know and I can show me. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? We can't stop it there. I am going to have to fix the um, the beak. And I'll have to kind of reshape it a little bit better and clean it up. But the negative burning here and the rock, so the water, the rock, and the dark background, I can reshape my beak so that it fits right. Now, let's see here, I'm gonna pop. That off, and we're going back it up. Hold on. We're going so high. <sighs> Let's see here. I gotta back us up. Hopefully, out of focus. Out of focus? Is that. Don't, don't you have a subscriber named Auto? Is that <laughs> when Auto uses the focus? It's Auto Focus? She's not in chat, though. Alright, see. So, do you want to give a intro to this? Yeah. Here, I'll hold it up for you. You talk. Oh, okay. Did you? Oh, yeah. You were going to try to sneak something else in there. That No. But now Chad's going to want it. Valerie doesn't want you to see a piece of art that's awesome. It's not awesome. Yes, it is. It was just a study. All right. So explain. So this was from last week. This was from the, the live stream last week. But this is just a watercolor version of the same creature. So legendary elk dragon warrior and his his name is Fukan Oksum. There's the name. Yes. So anyway. So that's 
That's all there is to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they wanted the elk dragon. Yeah. Dragon elk. Elk dragon. So, got that. Mm -hmm. You're just going to do it, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Fine. See? It's, and, it's not awesome. And Val did It was a study. As a study. And she doesn't like it. And I think it's amazing. It's not amazing, though. And so, she gave it to me because she didn't want it. And I'm going to put it in my studio because it's awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So, yep, Grace, he did it. Just like Bernadette, we now have, what's his name? Who? This guy, Fukan Aksan. I just didn't want to say it wrong. But he's not, <laughs> he's not a, a major character, but Hanzo is the main character. Do you want to show Hanzo? Oh, Since you did talk about Hanzo yesterday. Thanks, Grace. <laughs> Picture of him. He's pulling Hanzo. So is is Fook here a? Uh... He's a guardian. He's a guardian of the Jade of the Jade Mountains. Okay, but what's he have to do with Hanzo? Huh? But that's part of the story. Okay, but is he a buddy of Hanzo or? Hmm? Is he his buddy? He's a friend. Is that the one you want to show? I don't know. If you think that one or that one? My goodness, I just want to see. What's wrong with... Oh, that's a bad guy. No, that's Hanzo. Is that Hanzo? Yeah. Okay, that one. Oh, okay. No? Okay. Okay. It's so world. this is... It's your world. I'm just living in it. <laughs> this is Hanzo. He's a mouse. He's a mouse. It kind of looks like a cat. No, he's a... Because of the whiskers. That's what threw me off. Oh. That's all. So there's Hanzo, who goes with... Right there, he's 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 sparring with Crane. Oh, so. <laughs> Crane's using Crane, Crane style. So this is what we do <laughs> on our Sunday morning. The Jade Mountains. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying. I don't remember if all of your sketchbook. Is it all Hanzo? No, it's not all Hanzo. Okay. It's just it's there and then there when I get when I get inspiration for it. I don't think there's anything there. Oh, there's a black and white. <laughs> gotcha. Yes. You do. <laughs> so where's Fook at? Huh? I was trying to put it back on Fook. Oh, he's like right there. Oh. Okay. So. <laughs> so that's how. That's his sketchbook journal. That he uses on Sundays. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Alright. So, I know there's a delay. I'll just keep talking. Let's see here. We'll move it. See, they like your raven. It was just a study. That's all. I'm going to okay. save it. I'm going to sell it for $5 million. Except for so, I at least get half. I am the artist. Because I love it too much. <laughs> So, just to recap, we started on the little feathers, the hook feathers, the little feathers of the hummingbird. Um, Everything is going to have to be darker, but using stippling around the eye helped give us some more detail. The wood itself is doing pretty good. Um, it's always hard when you're burning on a new material for the first time i mean granted i've burned on birch but this this brand is new to me so there there is a little um give and take on figuring out what i think of it so far it's doing really good i'm not unhappy with it but this is also why i didn't want to do the review yet i figured by the time i finish this piece i will definitely know if i like it or not but so far if you're looking for a new wood to burn on, I would recommend it. It is nice. Sands beautifully. Basswood edges so that you can do a wraparound burn, which is what this will be. Very detailed along the edge, maybe. Um, and that's about it. I used 
uh, two, two of the spoon shaders, the smaller ones, which Pat now has. Actually, I think I used only the one small one. Pat now has four sizes. All this is linked down below. And I'm actually going to do a video on uh, comparing spoon shaders and just what you use them for in general. I also use the spear shader and the 9MS to get my dots and in the small areas. I am not trying to put every single feather line in because you wouldn't see it and it would be distracting and also a pain in the butt. So I'm not doing that. I use the Vanish Forum One eraser, my mono eraser, both the sanded and non-sanded. And that's about it. Okay. So if we have any further questions. Um I don't think so. Think Zoe. <laughs> Alrighty, so next week I think we are going, I'm, I'm going to try to get at least the first layers, uh, maybe, because I do need to work on the AAC video. Um, if I work on this, I'll be working on, well, my goal was for today, the hummingbird and the mushroom. So next week, I think we are going to focus on the water and trying to make it look misty where it's supposed to be misty so that is where we're at oh zoe wants to know if you're writing a storybook um not really i thought about it though i think probably it'll eventually become some kind of a storybook because eventually i think like we've got um our granddaughter jessica mm -hmm. and then i'm i'm sure there are probably the other grandchildren and so probably there will be enough to collate into a storybook and then maybe I'll look at doing that so I think that might be cool <laughs> thanks Pudge yes this is going to take a lot of patience for this one but I'm not in a rush to finish this one I'm really not so we're gonna work on it in parts so the water and the moss and dark backgrounds and blending things out so this is like a couple of lives and hopefully nobody gets bored with them so thank you all so much we will see you next week same you know, time same place you get the last word i just want to say something go for it okay well i we really appreciate all you guys is you know you being here and you're coming back every week and hanging out with us it really means a lot to us and it's, it's really nice and it's really amazing and we really appreciate your support so thank you we got our toasty fam all right guys oh and if you're new here don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell that way you're notified every time we go live and uploads and don't forget to leave a comment let me know what you guys think and what more you want to see happy burning guys bye, bye.